Okay, so this video is to give you the high points for doing the Crater Counting Lab using the JMARS tool. So in our course environment on the Geology tab, we devoted February 16th to being in the lab, looking at the JMARS uh, application and figuring out how to do the crater counts. So I've got this page in Moodle um, that lists the steps that you need to go through. So I'm going to assume you've created your account, you've downloaded the JMARS, um, you've added the crater counting layer by clicking on the add new layer and selecting the crater counting layer from the layers and that you have selected the crater counting layer once it's added and opened it in a docked format so you would see the options for working with the crater counting layer here in the um, in the layer window as well again we want to be zoomed out to or zoomed in i guess to 128 uh, pixels per degree uh, you need to be zoomed in at least that much in order to be able to identify these small one kilometer craters. Okay. So, out of the crater layer, open the duct, um, zoom to 128 pixels. And now um, you need to do basically two things for your data sheet. You need to specify the location and the zoom. So we're gonna, everyone's gonna do zero degrees longitude, zero degrees latitude, and 128 pixels per degree is one site. You need to measure the height and width of your view so that you can figure out how many square kilometers um, you're counting craters on. You would do that with the ruler tool. So if I select the ruler tool, I can, in the main view window, not in the pan window down here, but in the main view window, I can measure the height of the view. And if you look down in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you can see that this is about 222 kilometers uh, in a north-south direction and same thing for west to east use the ruler tool and that's 439 kilometers essentially and so you would enter those values into the height and the width so that you could calculate the total square kilometers and it's going to be something in the range of uh, hundreds by hundreds so that's going to be tens of thousands of square kilometers of Mars terrain that you're looking at. Then you need to count up the craters of these different crater sizes so that you can figure out the density. For that you would use the crater counting tool. And I would recommend that you start going from the small, marking the smallest craters first and then go to mark the progressively larger and larger size craters. So on the crater counting tool, if you go to settings, um, you want to set the new crater dimension to be a thousand meters, which is a kilometer. And the small craters are difficult to see, so I recommend you pick some nice bright color. And now when you bring the cursor out over the screen, and select the right tool, the selection tool, you'll see that you've got a little green stamp that is measuring one kilometer size areas. And so you basically would use that stamp to click out over all of the one kilometer craters. This is gonna be the hardest part. You're going, to, if you're not careful, you're gonna miss a lot. And so your density of the small craters is going to be really too smaller than it should be. So 
you know, take some time, make sure you're clicking on everything that is in that very smallest size range. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to actually do that. I'm just going to assume that I've clicked and selected all of, marked all of those very small craters. If you look while you're doing this, um, JMARS in the craters tab of the crater counting uh, layer is in the background keeping track of all of the one kilometer craters that you've measured, where they're located, their longitude and their latitude. And by definition, these are all one kilometer craters because that's what you set. Okay, once you feel like you've done an exhaustive job marking the one kilometer craters, go back into settings and set this up to 2000 meters. Select a different bright color because then again these are going to be small and difficult to see. And now you've got a slightly larger stamping tool that allows you to um, mark all of the two kilometer craters. And again there's going to be a fair number of these. So take your time and make sure you, you get them all marked. I won't bother for the video, but let's again pretend that I had. And I can go back and do four kilometer craters. Uh, you are going to find the situation where you know, is you're going to find craters that are somewhat larger than four. So should I mark that as a four? No, that looks like it's going to be large enough. It'll be one I'm going to mark with the eight kilometer tool. But, you know, here's one over here. This is about four kilometers. Again, make sure you measure all and stamp all of those. Do the same thing with eight kilometers, 16 kilometers, and so forth. And again, JMARS is keeping track of, of all of your counts. So if you go back to the Moodle directions page, um, you know, we've measured the height and width, where we've marked all of the craters. Let's assume we do that for all these different size categories. If you click on the craters tab, you can just count up the number of one, two, three, four, and so forth. Um, but there's also the ability to export your data files and uh, the image of your marked up site. So if you uh, click on export, you can export the data file as a CSV file just on the desktop somewhere that you can upload it into Moodle. And for um, exporting an image of your landscape that you've got all marked up, you can go to the file menu and capture to PNG. Again, save it out on the desktop somewhere as uh, an image file that you can then again upload into Moodle. Once you've got your counts of the different numbers of 1, 2, 4, 8, and so forth uh, kilometer craters. You can divide that by the total area in square kilometers uh, to get the density. And these densities are probably going to be in the order of some number times 10 to the minus 4, some number times 10 to the minus 5, because your area here that you're looking at is you know tens of thousands of square kilometers of, of Mars terrain. Once you've got those densities then for the one kilometer size craters you know if you had a density of like uh, 10 to the minus 3 which would be a fairly hard, large number of one kilometer craters you would plot a point there same thing for the two kilometer craters. You'd figure out what their density is, four kilometers and so forth. And ideally your, your uh, values for the crater densities versus size would fall in between a pair of these lines. 
So if your data are falling in here between the 1 million year old and 10 million year old isochrons, these lines that are characteristic of areas that are 1 million years old or 10 million years old, you could say that the piece of Mars that you're looking at is somewhere between 1 and 10 million years old. As opposed to, you know, if you had a terrain that had a lot more craters, that terrain might be a, bil a billion years old. Um, basically, has been sitting around getting smacked from by debris from space for a billion years, and therefore has a lot more craters. So that's that's the, it in a nutshell. You want to, you know, make sure you get two areas, one at zero, zero, and the other of your choosing, marked up with the crater counting tool at the appropriate resolution. Count up the number of craters of the different sizes, figure out the area, calculate the densities, and then do those plots. And then in Moodle, I want you to upload your data file and your image file from each site, and hand in as a hard copy the uh, your analysis of your crater data and how old you estimate that location to be.